Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I have got a video giving my impressions of Firewall Ultra nearly a week after launch as well as some information on a new update that is about to drop sometime in the next 24 hours and already a few hours have passed so it could be even out by the time you're watching this video now. Now before I go any further I just want to mention as a disclaimer that I'm a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment. However, I'm not going to let that stop the fact that I have issues with the game that I want to talk about. So let me just start by saying that the game is broken, at least for me, who always plays in squads. It is currently impossible right now to match make in a public lobby with a squad of four. I hear you can do it solo and you can do it with two people, but then anything more than that and it's broken. That's something that they, obviously they know about and they're working on. There is a plethora of bugs, like just so many bugs visual bugs and uh i don't mind the visual ones too much i mean you got some weird ones where you know the gun on your teammates or enemies are pointing up at an angle but the bullets are coming out straight that's like it's a bug it's not nice but it's not game breaking or anything but then you have the more serious bugs which affect gameplay which i would say maybe the worst offender being the fact that you cannot shoot c4 or mines that have been planted by enemies meaning that if all four of your team bring c4 or the enemies do and just plant them on the laptops, there's nothing the enemy can do. They have to go in there and send someone in to detonate them, one at a time even. And then also there is the Raha bug, at least I'm hoping it's a bug, where her skill that lets you see enemies through walls if they're making noise, which includes like walking, if they're not crouch walking basically, and if they don't have ninja then you can see them while they're moving. I think what the bug part of that is is that it seems to have infinite range whereas it should only be like in a limited area near Raha at least that's what I'm hoping and I hope that gets fixed if it is a bug and if it's not a bug if that's intentional then I still think that needs to be looked at because it's just a wall hack cheese basically. But everything I've said there I do not mind too much because at the end of the day these are bugs and I do believe First Contact and Entertainment are going to get you know on that with patches and they'll squash them and those things won't be issues for the future for the long term the thing i'm most worried about with firewall ultra are some of the design decisions so these are not bugs these are just things that are working as intended but the way that they're working i find you know i don't agree with them you know i wish they weren't there in some instances and or what you know maybe they need tweaking or adjusting the biggest one being manual aiming versus ADS and how that works and of course I know most of you probably know this already but ADS in this game uses your eyes where you're looking you just pull the trigger on the left controller and then the gun will just automatically snap you do not have to move your hands there it'll just go there like that and when you're shooting from that ADS position your recoil is basically reduced to nearly nothing it's like shooting laser beam precision it is so powerful that if you're up against someone using manual aiming the manual aiming person is at a complete disadvantage and then even when i do use manual aiming it just feels like a struggle i don't know what it is i can't quite put it into words to explain this i don't know if it's the positioning of the gun maybe it's just that i'm so used to playing pavlov that the way these guns are positioned it's kind of thrown my mind off a bit or something but it just feels very difficult to line up the sights manually especially with the pistols and the one-handed stuff now that's personally how i feel about it i know a lot of other people are kind of in agreement with me but then there are other people i've seen in my own community in my own discord who are saying listen we've gotten used to this system and we like it in my opinion ads needs to take a massive nerf i mean if they want to keep the system in there if they want that to make it easier for you know newcomers or more casual players that's fine i can get behind that but just the way it so quickly snaps i mean that needs to be nerfed or if you can't nerf the speed of this because you know it tracks your eyes so i guess it has to be fast if it's doing it by your eyes at least you know introduce way more recoil when you're just holding down that trigger on a fully automatic rifle because as it is now it's just like laser beam precision another one that's kind of more of a mixed bag i'm not really as against this as a lot of other people but i see where they're coming from too i'm i'm 50 50 honest is the eye tracked grenade throwing so in theory i like this the only parts of this I don't like is that the grenade seems to have difficulty going where I'm looking. So basically you look where you want the grenade to go, you release the trigger and the grenade should go there, right? But in my experience, a lot of the times it goes near us, you know, but it might hit the frame of a window instead of going into the window, even though I'm I'm looking in the window, at least to my mind I am. Maybe it's a problem with my own eyeballs, maybe I got some cross-eyed stuff going on here and it's messing with the system, I don't know. The alternative to that though is also, you know, a lot of people saying we should have manual throwing of grenades, but I'm not really 100% sure that's great either, just because manual doesn't really work that well 
in a lot of like well pavlov i guess is the only other game i have to go by but throwing a grenade in pavlov is kind of like feels like a lottery to me sometimes it goes where i want it to but most of the time you know it doesn't go anywhere near so in that regard like firewall grenade throwing is more accurate it's just that you know not as accurate as i was hoping you know but i still think i preferred this to the manual throwing of pavlov because it feels like more viable you know at least i have a better chance in firewall ultra than i do in pavlov especially at a distance i mean give up don't don't even try and throw something at a distance in pavlov at least i can't so there's a couple of other design decisions i'm a little bit iffy on i know one of them is going to be fixed in the next patch and we'll get into the patch in a sec that is the two minute wait time between matches right now it's just it's just too long two minutes especially when you're not doing anything with the assignments they're still locked out so you can't really do much customization you're kind of just waiting for that clock to tick down. So that's been addressed. I'm happy about that, but we'll get to that in the patch. Now, the other issue is the race of progress in the game. There's a lot of complaints that it's it's really grindy. You got to do a lot to get very little in terms of XP and in terms of this renown or reputation, this other kind of, which is basically your level. And crypto, of course, which is the, the currency you're using in the game. And the reason I say potentially is because, you know, this assignment system has not yet come live. So when that does come live, you'll be given challenges, you complete these challenges, and then you'll be getting, you know, a more substantial reward in terms of XP and crypto. Now, it remains to be seen how substantial that is. Is it enough to offset the grindy kind of a feeling? My fingers are crossed that it is. But until proven otherwise, it's going to remain a concern. So those are the bugs and those are my concerns. But... What about the positives? It's not like this game doesn't do anything right. It does a lot right. Buried underneath all the issues, you can see, you can tell that the amazing core gameplay of Firewall is still there. Visuals in this game are stunning. It is some of the best visuals you will see on the PSVR 2 headsets. Now there is reprojection going on, so it's from 16 A's open, and that gets reprojected to 120. So when you do turn sideways or whatever, you will see that little blur kind of thing going on. Now some people are sensitive to that. Personally, I don't care i didn't care about it in horizon didn't care about it in gran turismo 7 but if you're sensitive to that then maybe you want to go from smooth turn to snap turn or avoid it whatever if you're really bad against it i really like a lot of the new mechanics that they've introduced you know some of them are really interesting just the fact that you can be when you're down you can crawl now and then you can hold the triggers together to slow your breathing and it adds a new dimension there there's another system going on with the cameras where you can tell if an enemy is looking at you you can shoot out the cameras temporarily at least so that adds another little thing as well I really like the new map. It's uh, one of the best maps, I think, so far. And then all the returning maps, even though they're very familiar, they've added something different. They either look different, they've got like darkness, or they've got like new pathways. You know, it's just, it's not the same. It's not a one to one copy. It is a remake of these beloved maps returning. So, all in all, after six days or so of playing, it's you know, it's a mixed bag. There's a lot of potential here, but there needs to be, well, most importantly, the patches, the most obvious fundamental parts of the matchmaking doesn't work so that needs to be addressed asap a lot of little bugs need to be addressed and then it remains all up in the air if they will do anything with the aiming maybe they'll have data that shows that people are using us and liking us or maybe you know there will be such a backlash that they will come along and say okay we've heard what you said and we're going to just in things or that remains to be seen i don't know what's going to happen there keep in mind that ultra mode is supposedly also in the works not confirmed or anything but that was supposed to add manual reloading and maybe if they're going to do that they might just get rid of that ads system for an ultra mode as well again we don't know if that's still coming or not up in the air but what we do know is coming within the next 24 hours is the first official patch since firewall went live so i'm just going to read out some of the patch notes from the discord right now so it says in the next 24 hours we will be deploying a patch to apply some general gameplay and bug fixes you should expect some momentary downtime while the patch is applied here's the full list of incoming updates so number one both new and existing players will receive 100,000 crypto so this is for your trouble this is for all your you know for people like me who haven't been able to gain one crypto because i'm only been playing privates I'm going to have 100k in the bank, which is a nice little thing. Uh, not Obviously not fixing any issues, but it's a nice token. I'll take that, so I won't say no. Number two, we have reduced the between match start time to 30 seconds. However, the issue persists where the countdown clocks will appear different for players. We are working on this. So, in my negatives, in my, you know, questionable decisions there, I was talking about earlier on, the two minute was too much, now it's been dropped to 30 seconds, a significant improvement, I think. 
Although ideally a ready up button would be the best way to go and there is talk of them testing that and that could be in a future thing if they get that working. Number three, we have a fix for a bug that caused equipment like C4, motion sensors and mines to be indestructible. Thank God that is going to be patched as quickly as it is because as it is right now it's, uh, it's really OP to just plant C4 and traps and whatever and then just you know win that way. Number four, we have a fix for ADS appearing to point the wrong direction in third person so that's more of a visual bug. Number five, pointing a flashlight at someone's eyes will now momentarily blind them. However, the effect may not be noticeable on some brightly lit levels such as crossroads and compounds. So this is something that people have been wondering as well. We were told you'd be blinding people with flashlights in Firewall Ultra, but as it stands right now, it's not very bright. You know, it doesn't really have a, the desired blinding effect. However, they're going to be adding it now, so that's going to be nice to see. Number six, a crash that could occur due to subtitle issues has been fixed. And finally, tutorial card translations have been updated. At the end there, then they mentioned that our networking engineers are still hard at work on verifying, deploying and testing fixes for the matchmaking issues. And we will have more information about that as soon as possible. These other fixes were already approved and ready to go. So we decided it would be beneficial to push them to the live environment. So all these things they already knew about and they had them ready to go. But the matchmaking is going to take a little bit longer it seems hopefully not too much longer that needs to be top priority i'm sure it is top priority for them right now as well and that's why the assignment unlocking has been delayed as well just because they want people to be able to play otherwise you'll miss out on your chance to get these operations these assignments done anyway i think with firewall ultra we are at the start of a long road there's going to be a lot of updates ahead i'll be covering every single one of them on this channel so if you want to keep up to date on firewall ultra and psvr2 in general then consider like and subscribe and all that usual YouTube and shite. Let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the description to see a link to all his stuff. And finally, let me give a special shout out to my channel members who are helping me by supporting the channel and keeping the lights on. You know, they are the following. Muzz, Deadeye Dan, I've never seen such behavior in the war room before. Chopped PPE, no one knows. Move Master, make Alva World League commentator cast. Deej, the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, and Mr. 777. Thank you very much for all that support. It is greatly appreciated. If you want to be a member, you can join underneath the video as well as the join button somewhere for exclusive perks and whatnot. That is it for this video. I'll see you very soon. Until then, please stay nice and moist.